All right, here we are at January the 7th, 2023. I am sighting or double checking the sighting in my Excalibur 340 mag. I have not shot this thing in two or three weeks because we've kind of, maybe two weeks, I don't know, maybe more than that. And I have learned from experience that you need to make sure that everything's okay. Planning to go out to the woods this afternoon. I took olive oil yesterday, sat in my stand, and I noted that many of the positions were difficult to attain in the latter stand I was in. There were different things in the way. The longbow is just not very handy from a ladder stand, depending on, you know, where it is. And so I uh, decided I better get the crossbow. We've only got a, two weeks left in the deer season. I'm at 25 yards now, which is a pretty good poke, really. And uh, I shot it one time, and it's good. And I'm going to shoot it one more time. I'm at 25 yards using the second sight uh, marking, which is supposedly in at 30. I held it a little low, thinking that, you know, since this is only 25, that it would shoot about right. It seemed to hit right where I was aiming, so I'm going to aim at the black uh, tennis can top down there that I have put on the deer. Okay. Firing position, I'm going to aim dead on with my second, with my 30 yard reticle. And see where it hits. Let's go up there and see. That's about what I expected. Uh, if I had aimed at the bottom of that black tennis can top, I probably would have hit in the middle. So I was correct at 25 yards to aim a little low. Because see that, although that will kill a deer right there, being as deer duck when they hear a noise, that shot right there may well have gotten too high. I hope I don't have a shot that far away. I hope they're closer. But I'm satisfied that this thing here is sighted in properly. I have a little bit of trouble getting these out of this hard foam thing. And we're going to go out there to the woods in a little bit and try to get set up to go hunting this afternoon. Um, I did talk to a guy a while ago, uh, I don't know if you watched my last video, but it was about whether or not God would be mad at us for eating bacon, a kind of a cooking video, but I talked to a friend of mine a while ago and he said that he had knew somebody that was having problem with wild hogs getting in their uh, fields and he said they were close to 200 of them that they caught on a night video camera so I'm on in the process of finding out if they will let us go out there and hunt uh, being as deer season is winding up and maybe I can uh, get a little bit of the footage of the wild hog hunting around here which these are they call them feral hogs because they're well uh, tame hogs that mixed with wild hogs and now they're kind of mixed up but they look they look like they're black you know they look mostly like woods hogs the hogs according to the things that I've read through the years 
the wild hogs go back here all the way to Spanish colonial time back when DeSoto came through here I think it was 1519 and DeSoto had a herd of hogs I think they said he had 600 with him he had a pretty darn big army too and they drove these hogs with them all the way through the southeast and they took a left hand turn maybe up around Columbus Georgia headed over into Alabama Mississippi territory and lost hogs along the way and so we think that the origin of the wild hogs around here goes back to the early 1500s so that'd be 1600 1700 1800 1900 we talk in 400 or more years uh, why are they overrun around here now we got a lot less hunters than we used to have hunting has is going out with the new generation around here they're still doing pretty good but a lot of the young people now are holding a little object in their hand and they're doing this kind of stuff to it right here they're punching buttons and that's their main recreation so a lot of the young guys aren't out when I was uh, 19 years old we didn't have those objects to put in our hand and punch buttons and uh, lot, I'd say 50 to 80 percent of the young men hunted. It's not that way now. I'd say it's more like 20 percent hunt now. So there's not as many animals being killed. And back then, there was a lot more dog hunting going on. People had dogs that they... Uh, used to go out and hunt hogs with a lot of that stuff is not is uh, not happening um, now though there is a new phenomenon going on and that is that they have these uh, night cameras that use thermal technology and they can put them on their rifles and they can see the doggone hogs out there at two and three hundred yards almost as plain as day so that kind of stuff is going on now so but there are um, there's a lot of damage going on with the wild hogs so I'm gonna let you know how that pans out and see if we can get in on some of those hunts and I'm gonna be hunting with either uh, olive oil or either the crossbow so I'll get back to you on that okay I said I'd get back to you and I am getting back to you. I'm getting back to you quicker than I thought, though. I decided to do one more test. And that is that I'm going to put my 20-yard sight pin a little high. And uh, just see what happens at 25 yards. Really what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it middle of the deer. Because remember the deer jump. All right, we got it on. So I'm expecting, I'm going to try to put it right on the middle. And I'm expecting to hit low. Oh. I thought about it. I thought about it as I was shooting. Mm. All right. May as well show it. One of the disadvantages of a crossbow. Mm -mm -mm. I had my thumb slightly up too high and the string hit it. This is not my string finger. Knocked the crap out of it. All right. It's not a real bad wound, but it really popped me. It tore into my thumb. Right before I shot, I thought about that. I don't know why I didn't stop. Could have been a lot worse right there, buddy. All right, I'm going to go in there and get this wrapped up with a Band-Aid. And, oh yeah, let's go check this shot and just see what I thought it was going to do. I thought it was going to hit low. Uh, 
I'll tell you this, olive oil wouldn't have done that to me. <laughs> it's uh, hurting a little bit right now. It's throbbing a little bit right now. But I promise you, if you've been watching my videos, you'll see the wound that I did to my right arm by when I was putting the stands up. This is exactly where I thought it was going to hit. Uh, it's not dirty. It's going to be okay. I'm going to treat this wound exactly like I treated the one on my arm. If you get on my channel and look back, I can't tell you exactly where, but I hurt my arm pretty badly putting up a ladder stand back at the beginning of the season when a limb broke and jabbed into my arm. It looked a lot worse than this. This is not going to be any fun here. But uh, this is going to be fine. I can still hold my bow. I can still eat. Because I eat with my right hand. And that's really important. Do not do this at home. First time I've done it. I knew it right. I had it up there. And I thought I better check my thumb. Because I moved the where I was uh, um, resting the, the bow. Okay. But look at the shot. The only blood drawn here was mine. It's not too bad. Okay. This is Gardner Israel. Everything, all things work together for good for those that love God. That's all I can tell you. So there's something good going to come from this right here. One more time. Don't stick your thumb up in the way of your string on a crossbow. This is Gardner Israel, signing off.